All right, bud. I'm Preston Lehman, also known as Young You, and uh, I do my passion project on making music. Uh, music really means a lot to me just because uh, it's kind of like my journal, and uh, I post it out there for people to listen to in a way, but it's just a really good way if I have a good or a bad day just for me to get my emotions out and kind of, I don't know, feel good. Next slide, please. So uh, how I first got into music was uh, freshman year, I went on a trip over Thanksgiving break to Turks and Caicos, and uh, I met this girl, and uh, I really liked her, but she lived in Chicago, so when I left, uh, I was really upset about it, and I never like had a journal or anything growing up, but um, I wrote about it on the flight home, and uh, when I actually got home, I kind of made it into a song, and. I recorded this song on like a $20 mic that I got off Amazon, and uh, no editing or anything, and I posted it, and I think now it has like, it has like a little over a thousand plays, but my friends like listened to it and actually thought it was kind of cool, so I was like, hey, like this is kind of cool, but it sounded terrible to me. Um, so freshman year, I made like two more songs after that, but they sounded horrible, and they never really like got any recognition, so I just kind of forgot about it, and then senior year, about seven months ago, Mo Hewish came up to me. We had never talked before. I thought he was like some like Mormon dude that didn't really do anything. Just kind of like went to church. Um, but he came up to me in the lunch Most line. Most Mormon kids. Anyway. <laughs> he came up to me in the lunch line and was like, "Hey man, I'm gonna like start making music. Um, would you want to be part of it? I knew that you made a song freshman year, and I was like, "Well, thank you for knowing that I made a song." But I thought it was like some high school fad that wasn't really gonna turn into anything. So. I was like, I gave him my Snapchat, and this was on a Monday, and that Saturday he texted me, and I went over to his house, and it was Will No Grady, Jace Fodrell, uh, Mo, Nick Schultz, and I, and we listened to beats for like two hours, and we all found a beat that we liked, and we made this song ding -a which I'm sure a lot of people have heard, um, but and then that we posted that song, not thinking anything would happen, we made it, it was like like a good bonding session for the boys, like. It was really cool, and we posted it, and then it was getting played at parties. Uh, a lot of, like, my parents have heard it, a lot of parents heard it and thought it was good. Um, and then Mrs. Kovacs heard it also. But uh, it just, it got a lot of publicity, and we made the group Cosmic Order. Um, and we made a full album for it, but nothing really happened with that, with conflicts with parents and people getting retweeted by famous people. But. We don't need to go into that. Um, so Cosmic Order kind of dissipated and nothing happened after that. But uh, about at the beginning of this year, two months ago, uh, Mo and I never really stopped making music. And we, we started 3005 Crew, which is based off of the Childish Gambino song, 3005. And we uh, continued making music. We watched a lot of YouTube videos and figured out how to actually edit songs and do what, was, uh, what we had been doing for all these months just actually get it right, because ding a -ling, uh, like Mo's voice is edited totally wrong, my voice is super low, and everything just sounds really bad, so we wanted to figure out how to do it well, and actually kind of turn it into something that we'd be known for in high school. And so, for Christmas, we both got $150 mics instead of the $20 mics off Amazon, and we had the pop filters, Mo got a $200 editing software, and we kind of like actually started taking this seriously because it was something that we both love. And it, it made us uh, really close from like never talking at all uh, at the beginning of this year to like now we hang out all the time, whether we're making a music video or making actual songs. And we brought, we brought our mics with us everywhere. Uh, in his brother's bedroom, in that picture to the right, that's in my closet uh, where I took the picture of Mo. And 3005 Crew wasn't just music. Um, we kind of did everything we could with it. We have a music, or we're making a music video right now. We took that picture with McGregor that's gonna be on the cover of um, something in the future. Uh, I have an album that released and we had a party for that. Um, that was a pre-release party and that's a picture from there. And the three people that are on my album, which is Matt, Mo, and Will, uh, I got them in the corner of that picture. So that's why I just thought that that was kind of interesting. and. The one cool thing that's actually happened for making music was I got invited back in January to perform in Phoenix uh, on February 6th, which was a Tuesday, so I couldn't go. 
but I just thought it was cool that I actually got invited to perform uh, in a live setting somewhere. Next, please. Caroline. So my music is on over 30 uh, music media sites. Um, the main ones being Apple Music and Spotify. I mainly posted them on these media sites so that I could listen to them. Uh, like, obviously put it on like my private Snapchat story or like my uh, Insta. Um, just like, so if my friends wanted to listen to it, they could. But it actually got a lot of good feedback being Chestnut, uh, the song that I made freshman year, recreated with Mo. And uh, it's the same first two verses and the third one uh, changed to his. And so he and Mo really liked that song and that's why he approached me in the beginning, uh, at the beginning of this year. Uh, that was my song from freshman year and he knew me for that. And he just thought that it was really cool and he wanted to recreate that song and put his own verse on it. So um, we put that on there, Freezing with Will, and then Peach Rings, which was the most fun song to make with uh, Will McGrady and Matt Salone. Um, we made that in my garage and we, we ate six bags of peach rings while making that song and that's why we actually named the song that. And then my favorite song that I've ever made, which took the shortest to make but had the most meaning to me, was uh, Friends. And I had this beat that I wanted to make for a long time, but I didn't know if like, I, hadn't, I hadn't had my heart broken recently or anything, so it was more of a sad beat. And um, I just had no, no idea what I wanted to write about. And I woke up one morning and I knew what I wanted to write about. And it was about my three best friends, uh, which is one of them being Jared, who's not here, but uh, Jared Evers, Maddie Fitch, and Anders Hartman. And uh, the funny part about that song is that it didn't take long at all to make because I didn't write any lyrics for it. The first verse was actually me just talking about what they mean to me, um, which is why I like halfway through my first verse, I laugh and um, I sound really monotone. I didn't edit it at all just because I wanted it to be from the heart and I didn't uh, write any lyrics for it or anything. And it really, uh, when they heard it, this was the, this is a picture from the first time all four of us listened to it together. Uh, it was at the party for my album and everyone was gone except for them because I always helped to clean up. And we just listened to the song and uh, they all hugged me and we were all crying. So that was really nice uh, just because to write a song about them and make someone feel special and see all the smiles on their face knowing how much they actually meant to me in my life was um, just amazing for me knowing that just me talking on a mic could cause that and have us be that close. Next, please. So beats, um, this is the typical makeup of a beat when making music. I have no idea, nor do I plan on learning how to do that, and neither does Mo. Um, we usually go on YouTube and listen to beats for hours on end until we actually find one. My uh, album with six songs took about two weeks just finding beats um, to actually make it. And that's why like making music and making albums takes so long for artists when they don't release something for two years. Uh, just making an album and finding the perfect beat or if you're having to be made for you uh, by a certain producer, it takes forever to find the right sound and the right everything that um, a music producer will want in their song. And uh, having these YouTube beats, like other people have used them, but it's really fun uh, for Mo and I just to take this beat with nothing else on it and make it our own kind of song, like Dingling. It was just a plain song, but then we made it about this area and everything, like Tony's and stuff like that. But um, <laughs> beats are really fun to play around with, uh, and it really uh, brings out your emotions, whether it be something hype or whether it be about your friends or a girl that's broken your heart. It's like a journal that you can write about uh, and then make it rhyme and make it for people to listen to, which is uh, really cool. Next. So recording, uh, we record wherever we can just because we don't have a studio that we can record at. Um, this was the recording of Peach Rings. This is Matt recording in my garage with garbage bags next to him. Just um, 
we found the beat and we were in my garage and we were like, let's record this right now because if you find the right beat, then making lyrics is fairly easy for it and you have a premise of what you want to make this song about. And so we recorded it there. We've recorded pretty much everywhere in the Jeep. That, this was a video on Twitter that Mo and I made. Uh, some people might have seen it. We recorded at sunset on the roof of his farmhouse and we figured that um, a lot of people listen to songs and hear songs but they don't know where it's recorded they figure oh it's in a like music studio where people can record all the time but Mo and I just wanted to show that that's not where we record we wanted to show that we record wherever we can whenever we can and that's why we made this video and it's us actually writing and recording a song on his roof and just uh, having fun and we wrote this song just about our childhood and things that we used to do that we can't do anymore, like drinking Capri Suns and not worrying about school or anything, rather than now being worried about school and college. And it was just a really good release for us to write about that. Next, please. So editing a song, which is my <coughs> least favorite thing to do and takes the longest, um, is just after you record your vocals, um, it sounds terrible, and that's why you have to edit it. So for me, uh, as in ding a -ling, my voice is way too low, and you can't hear it. So with uh, vocals now, my voice is at the perfect pitch, whereas it's deep enough, but it's not loud enough. And so we leave the pitch the same, but the, uh, the gain needs to be raised, which is like on a car stereo, how you have bass and treble, and every, all the guys, I'm sure, turn up the bass on their stereos, but no one really knows what treble is, and that's when you, uh, um, you loudened the voice. And that's what we do with mine uh, when making songs, which sounds fairly easy, but it's actually it took us like three hours on YouTube to figure out how to do, because it's all the settings and different softwares you can add onto your actual editing software. Uh, there's a lot you can do. And so the software that I use is called Audacity and it's free, um, but it gets the job done and it's fairly easy to play around with. Mo has like a $200 editing software that has all the bells and whistles, but he likes to play around with auto-tune and stuff like that. But I just like to make my voice sound okay and then post the song. Um, editing for me is pretty easy. I just raise my voice and leave the pitch the same. Whereas for Mo, uh, his voice will crack a lot, or um, he doesn't put enough emphasis on a word, and his voice is really high. And so he spends, we spend about 30 minutes editing my vocals, and then like an hour and a half editing his just for like a 45 second verse, which sounds kind of crazy that we'd actually do that, but it's a lot of fun just playing around with your voice and seeing how you can make it sound, whether it be with auto-tune, or like you make it sound demonic with like a pitch corrector, and everything is really fun when editing. It just sucks having to edit songs and make them sound good because you want it to sound perfectly. And you'll have three different verses that sound perfect, but each of them sounds a different way. Next, please. And this is just the video of actually editing. Oh, there's no permission. We'll come back to it. Okay, Here well then, is. yeah, that, that's it. But um, then for the interactive activity, everyone already has their uh, laptops open. Just, if you could go on YouTube and uh, and open it up and look up whoever your uh, favorite artist is, whether it be a rapper like Shoreline Mafia or whether you like country and you like Chris Where's Davis. your song? My song? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's on YouTube, yeah, but. Where is it? I mean, they're not clean. Oh, man. The, well, friend, Friends is. I just I just say the S word once. But otherwise... <laughs> who, do I, who do I type in? Uh, type in Young News. It's Y-U-N-G and then N-O-O-G. All one word? Y-U-N-G. Not, not Young. It's Y-U-N-G. Oh. <laughs> and then N-O-O-G. And yeah, and that's space. So young, young space new. Stop laughing at me. It's like all this right here, but then N O G. 